Hi, I'm Clint Yerke from the Canola Council of Canada, and I'm going to walk you through how to use a blackleg race test to choose the right blackleg resistance for your field. Blackleg remains one of our most important diseases in Canada. Not only is it responsible for eating away hundreds of millions of dollars in yields each year in Canada, but it can be a trade issue. So in order to manage that, to order uh, to manage blackleg, there's a few options to use in an integrated management strategy. One is to use longer rotations of two years or greater. Um, the new canola seed treatments with enhanced black lake fungicides, they actually work really quite well. If you happen to have a susceptible canola variety in a field, a foliar uh, fungicide might be used. But most importantly, choose the right canola resistance for your field. And that's what we're gonna focus on here today. But when it comes to black leg resistance, there's two classes or two different types of, of resistance. We have major gene resistance and quantitative resistance, but we're gonna focus on the major gene resistance here because this is the type of resistance that recognizes the races of the black leg fungus Leptospheria maculans. And so far we've identified about 10 different major resistance genes that might be in use in Canadian canola cultivars. So which major resistance genes should you use in your field? Well, to best choose that, it helps to know what avirulence genes you have in the pathogen. So what is an avirulence gene, you might be wondering? Well, an avirulence gene is simply some part of the Leptospheria maculans fungus that the resistance gene recognizes. When that resistance gene gets a positive match, the plant then initiates its defense mechanisms to, to kill that pathogen. So a resistance gene is, is kind of like a sensor and the avirulence gene is, is like the, the sensor's target. You need to have both of those in order for the plant to detect and to, to kill the pathogen. But this is where things get a little bit tricky. The, the relationship between these avirulence genes and resistance genes is, is kind of complicated. It's a little bit messy, but not to worry. You don't need to know these details unless you happen to be a pathology nerd like me. But you might hear talk about races of the black leg pathogen Leptospheria maculans. A fungal individual might have more than one avirulence gene in it. It might have many avirulence genes. But which avirulence genes it actually has, well, that's how we describe a race. So when you hear of race tests being used for black leg, it's really just referring to what avirulence genes are actually present. Okay, so if you want to get the Leptospheria maculans races identified for a field that you had black leg issues in and you want to select a better canola cultivar the next time you plant canola in that field, well, you need to take a sample of an infected stem. That can be this year's canola, or it can be old canola residue from a couple of years ago. Look for evidence of the disease. You need to have the pathogen present on those samples. Send it to one of these three labs, uh, Discovery Seeds in Saskatchewan, 2020 Seeds in Alberta, or PSI Lab in Manitoba. And you'll get some results from the labs, and they might look something like this example that we'll use from uh, Discovery Seed Labs. The results that you get are of a genetic test on the pathogen, which tells us what the genotype of those races are. The genotype is the actual genes that are present within the, the DNA, the makeup of, of the plant. But it's not the genotype that we're interested in. We're interested in the phenotype. The phenotype is the, is the expression of those genes. This is what the plant actually sees, is the phenotype. It's the, it's, the resistance genes will be recognizing this phenotype. And so that's what we actually want to be paying attention to here. So in this example, uh, the predicted phenotype has avirulence genes AVRLM2, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 11. So what we that means is that we need to find a resistance gene that will detect one of these avirulence genes. And you only need one. You only need one resistance gene to, to detect that. So if we're looking in this example, so AVRLM2, we need to find the resistance gene RLM2 that will detect that. So that's resistance group B. AVRLM4 is resist, detected by RLM4, which is resistance group E1. AVRLM5 
Well, that particular resistance gene is not present in uh, in our canola varieties that that we are aware of at this point, so it does not have a a corresponding. So, but let's let's use this as an example, RLM four and ABRLM four. So let's use this as an example that let's try to find resistance group E one. And we are actually pretty fortunate in Canada that we do have some brands of canola seed that are listing which major genes are present there. So this is just a snapshot of, of, a, of a couple of different organizations. This is not a complete list of, of the cultivars that are currently available. There's certainly a lot more. But let's keep in mind, we want to find a cultivar that has the resistance group E1. So what we will look through the literature and, and if we can find one that says... Uh, E1 rate as, as an example here, then that is the uh, best variety that will control that particular race for the field. So we can take comfort in knowing that if we purchase this variety the, the next time that we put canola into this field, then we will actually have good control. It won't be complete control because the sample that, that is submitted to the lab might not be completely representative of, of the entire variation in the field, but certainly we will know that this variety will control this race that uh, was present in the sample. Really hope that this helps in knowing how to use these black leg race tests that are available and how to select the right canola cultivar. But certainly if you have more questions, visit blackleg.ca for more information. And a special thanks to SAS Canola for the assistance in building this video. Thank you very much.